Hi, welcome to Big Time Car Rental. Hi, any cars available? Sure. Would you like a GPS with that? Yes. Prepaid gas. Good to go. Insurance? Absolutely. Let's see, would you like AC, a rear view mirror, steering wheel, all four tires? Have to be extra for all of that? Yes, including the keys. Some things should just be standard. Rev Voice has 17 standard calling features. Cut the blue wire. Get Rev Voice, save money. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into NB12 weekend broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight, the DNA ratifies its first four candidates. The FM still raising serious NHI questions. A female Bahamian scholar says the controversy surrounding the gender referendum is a distraction. Plus, as always, we check out this week's Cutest Kids and Pets. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. Once again to MB12. The Democratic National Alliance last night ratified four candidates for the next general election during the opening of its new headquarters on East Street South. Popular singer and businesswoman Emily Williams, formerly known as Sweet Emily, has been ratified for the Marathon constituency. Williams, along with her husband, started Church Without Borders in 2005. Prodesta Moore, who's the co-founder of the Urban Youth Development Center, has been ratified for Elizabeth. Moore is an interpreter and philanthropist and was the DNA's unsuccessful candidate for the Killarney seat in the last general election. Businessman and pilot Bushme Arm Brister has been ratified for the Carmichael constituency, and accountant and financial advisor Brenda Harris has been ratified for Baines Town and Grantstown. Harris is the executive director of the Bain and Grantstown Community Empowerment Center, which empowers underprivileged youth. During the opening of the new headquarters, DNA leader Branville McCartney said the Christie administration has done nothing after nearly four years of governance, and the launch of these candidates is one of the first steps to the opposition party because coming the next government. But for months now, the DNA has been on the ground in your communities. We have heard your concerns, listened to your ideas, and we're crafting policies to benefit the many rather than the few. Today marks the official step towards that reality. Today, the DNA has revealed the first group of talented, right-thinking, passionate Bahamians who will help craft a real vision for the future of our country. Be assured that this is just the beginning. McCartney said Bahamians deserve effective leadership and a government that's committed to an ambitious, well-thought-out plan to get the Bahamas on the path of growth and prosperity. The DNA leader said this involves protecting and advancing generations of Bahamians yet unborn, providing young people, whether abroad or at home, with opportunities and empowering Bahamian entrepreneurs. We certainly need for each and every member of the electorate an economic policy that values domestic investments just as much or even more as foreign investments and a strategy to effectively tackle youth unemployment. That means an immigration policy that works. That means a Bahamas that is not crippled by the fear of crime and a nation where we no longer lose our sons and daughters, fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters to sense this violence. That means a press that can effectively do its job without fear of public scolding from party or government officials. McCartney said above all, Bahamians want a government they can trust to act in their best interest. Far too long. They have shirked their responsibilities to the persons who elected them. You, in instead, they have acted to save their own political skin rather than do the right thing. The DNA pledges to always do the right thing. 
even if it's unpopular, even when the decision is unpopular. We've proven it. We've experienced it. We've done it. McCartney said the DNA will ratify a full slate of candidates. Well, the Christie administration is misleading the public with its national health insurance and doesn't appear to know what it's doing and what it wants to do. This is according to Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis, who suggested NHI is just another example of government's political expediency. I've always said from day one that the government need to enter proper discussion with the insurance company with the physicians so that they can understand and they can then set goals moving forward. The PLP government did an excellent job in selling to the Bahamian populace that the cookouts that you are doing today, the sponsor sheets that you are asking, requesting of individuals to sponsor you to help pay for some medical event would cease. Mina said the cookouts and sponsor sheets are a result of catastrophic illnesses like cancer or major surgeries and transplants, which he said the Christie administration's current NHI plan does not adequately address or will continue to. He said the government needs to stop fooling the people and just tell them the truth. What the government is instituting will not affect that. The public must understand that it will not be affected. The cookouts will continue. So the Bahamian populace must understand that they have not, they have been misled. The cookouts will not stop. The PLP are misleading them. Back in January, Prime Minister Perry Christie said $25 million would be set aside to create a special fund as a provision for catastrophic health care. He said the fund will be a temporary placement of monies to cover the period that will take to evolve NHI to the point where the benefits package is being offered and clearly defined. Well, as some MPs prepare to vote against the controversial constitutional amendment bills on gender equality, an internationally renowned and highly respected local scholar says in this day and time there should be no controversy on something as simple as basic human rights. Former head of the College of the Bahamas School of Economics, Dr. Olivia Saunders says that there are still Bahamians who believe women should not have the same rights as their male counterparts is baffling. The only controversy that surrounds them in my mind is how much longer are we going to scarcify of half of our population, namely women. Our history as persons of African descent should not allow us to treat anyone less than equal. And to think that before the law, women do not have the same rights as men, is just to me in the 21st century something we should not even have a conversation about. It should not even be an issue. A handful of MPs revealed to the Nassar Guardian earlier this week that they still oppose some aspects of the bill. In fact, Marco City MP Greg Moss said because of his issues with questions two and four in the bills, he would do his best to campaign against them. His fear is that bill number four opens the door to same-sex marriage, while his opposition to bill number two is that he believes no citizen should be able to pass citizenship to a foreigner through marriage. Although Bahamian men are now legally able to, he believes that right should be taken away from them rather than given to women to do the same. Oh, well, why would we want to take away right from somebody or some group of human beings? I, I'm, I'm not following that argument whatsoever. That to, to level the playing field, we're going to take uh -huh. rights away from a group of, of persons. So we're lessening what they had. How is that helping? Clearly a scarcity thinking. Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage has said there would be no amendments to the bills that are now in the committee stage in the House of Assembly to address the issues MPs and members of the public have. He has said the referendum will be held in June or July this year. Saunders said it's up to Bahamian women to understand their inherent value and support the bills. Stand in your abundance. Do not allow others to dictate to you what you are worth and to come forth and vote and be vocal about it, that I am a human being no less than anyone else and I deserve all the rights and privileges 
as anybody else. Well, former Progressive Liberal Party Cabinet Minister George Smith says he doesn't think many Bahamians really understand the gender equality referendum or take it seriously enough. Smith said the referendum, which contains four bills, gets rid of a lot more issues than some Bahamians understand and it protects residents. There's been a lot of talk about, and it is right, that we get rid of these issues of inequality towards women and inequality towards male in so far as the male being able to pass his citizenship to his, his offspring that is born out of wedlock. So it isn't just a matter to affect women, it is a matter that affect men who father children outside of wedlock who would wish to pass their citizenship on to their offspring and presently cannot under those particular circumstances. Last week, some members of Parliament expressed major concerns over the referendum and still opposed some of the bills. St. Anne's MP Hubert Chipman and, Mark, and Bamboo Town MP Renward Wells both said they have a major issue with the fourth bill, which would make it unconstitutional to d discriminate against someone based on sex. Others said they need to review the bills before determining a position before next week's vote in the House of Assembly. Smith said while it seems as though both parties ultimately support the referendum, he thinks now is not the right time for the Christie admi administration to follow through with its plans. It appears that both major political parties support the, 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 this particular issue today. And it, is, it appears that it is the right time to make real the commitment to get rid of, of inequality based on sex and, and um, uh, between male and female. So it's because of the importance that's attached to it, it is the right thing for the party. Well, stay with us. News from the police is up after the break. Plus, why starting sex education at an early age can prevent the proliferation of sexual offenders. Those stories and more when we come right back.